Hey Fizz One Kids, Campbell here. In this video, we're going to talk about power, what it is, what the units are, and how to calculate with it. What power is, is the rate at which energy is transformed or transferred. So the rate at which I change energy in a system. So we say power is the energy, change in energy over the change in time. Now, if we're talking about energy transferred in this unit, we talk about work. So we also talk about power as the amount of work that's done in a specific time interval. So we say that it's work over time. Power is work over time. Now, if you think about the units, right, work and energy, those are joules, time is seconds. So the unit of power, which is a joule over second, has a special name. It's called the watt. What? The watt. Now, we also talk about power in terms of force, or the output power of a force. So anytime we have a force that's doing work, right, it's transferring energy into or out of the system. And we call that the output power of the force. So if we think about our equation for power, right, power is the amount of work done per unit time. And if we break this up, right, work is the force, if we want to talk about it in terms of force, times the change in distance. Um, and we put that over time. Notice that. What is the change in distance over change in time? Well, that is the a oops, let's write properly, the average velocity. Or if it's constant velocity, that would be the, the velocity. So that means that power, um, in terms of output power, in terms of force, is the force applied to, uh, times the average velocity. So we have another equation for power, work over time or force times velocity. Um, now, it's best to use this if we have a constant velocity. If we don't, we would have to do an average velocity. Let's take a look at some examples. So here I have an elevator that's 900 kilograms and it's being lifted at a constant speed of four meters per second. What is the output power of the force? Well, power is force times the average velocity, and in this case it's constant velocity, so it's just velocity. Um, what is the force being applied? Well, if we draw a free body diagram, right, we have the force of gravity down, and we have a tension force up or whatever, but that's the power that's we're lifting the elevator. We could call that maybe the lifting force. If we're at constant speed, right, then the sum of the forces equals zero, so that means that tension force or that lifting force is the same as the force of gravity. So that means that the force, remember, force of gravity is the mass times g. So that means my force is the mass of the elevator times the acceleration due to gravity. And then we just multiply by the speed. So that means the force is just mg. And we multiply by our speed v. And so we're going to take 900, multiply by 9.8, and multiply that by 4. So if you do that, you're going to get a pretty big number. It's 35,300 watts. So watts are kind of small, so usually we talk in terms of kilowatts. So we could call that 35.3 kilowatts. All right, let's try one more example. I have a 1,000 kilogram sports car, and it's accelerating from rest to 20 meters per second in five seconds. And I want to know what is the power delivered by the engine. So the engine is applying a force to accelerate it. And so the work, there's work being done by the engine, but notice it doesn't give me any force information or distance information. It does give me speed, but I can't use that equation we just talked about, the force times velocity equation. In this case, we want to go back to the root of the power equation, that power is the change in energy over change in time. So what energy is being transformed in this case? Well, we're going from rest to a speed, so that means we're changing the kinetic energy over time. So the power delivered by the engine changes its kinetic energy. Now, um, so we have kinetic energy final minus kinetic energy initial over time. Um, kinetic energy initial, it starts from rest, so that's zero. So we're just going to do one half mass of the car, velocity final of the car squared over time, and that will give us our power. So now we just got to plug our numbers in. So one half times 1,000, the mass of the car, uh, times 20 squared, that's going to be a big number, divided by 5. All right, well, if we do that math, you're going to get 40 kilowatts or 40,000 watts. Now, in the U.S., we would use the, the unit horsepower. Horsepower is another 
unit of power. Not the SI unit though. Well, that's it for power. So we'll fill out that WSQ and I'll see you in class.